Hello pumpkins! You may notice it's a bit dark in here today. Um, it is hot. I do have the air conditioner on in the next room, but I'm trying to keep things cool so the overhead light is off and I've just got the ring light and it looks a little bit spooky, but that's okay. Today we are going to talk about what to do when your magic doesn't work. And this is courtesy of uh, a complaint from a subscriber of mine who tried a sour jar and says, this doesn't work. They don't work. And uh, I wanted to talk about what could possibly be going on and why, and kind of what to do when that happens. So I think the first thing that I want to talk about, now my subscribers don't like when I talk about curse work, so I kind of have uh, veered away from that, but um, it is not a one-on-one -on -one activity and it is difficult. And somebody asked once, so are you afraid that somebody has got your picture in a jar somewhere? And no, I'm not, because very few magicians have the juice to be able to curse. So I am well protected. The chances of someone being able to do that are small. The chances of me pissing somebody off to the point that they'd want to do that are also small. Uh, so yeah, not worried about that. Um, they can be dangerous if not done properly. And I think that I was probably a bit irresponsible to just show like, Hey, here's how to do a sour jar with absolutely no, um, background on um, you know, years of practice to do magic. So uh, magic is a practice and it is a skill that develops daily. Now we all have this innate ability to change and manipulate our environment. And I can remember one of the most powerful moments for me with magic was being at a, um, a, a, a psychic fair and there was a bit of a lull and a kid came up to my table and um, you know when kids are around like I talk to them why not <laughs> they're people too and uh, so I'm playing with a pendulum with him and I let him hold my pendulum and ask a question and it started to go in the way that um, was right with the answer that he knew and he's like wow I can do magic and I said to him no you are magic and I think that, that the look on his face of realizing that he had power to change the world, I hope, this was probably like eight, I am hoping that that sticks with him through his life and that he realizes that he has this power to change the world and to change his world and change his reality. So that's really cool. And I think that um, a lot of that magic stuff tends to be confidence. And when I do the pendulum, like it's not any other force. It's not angels or demons or ghosts or whatever. So people are like, it's so scary. It's not scary. It's you. It is your energy and your connection to, uh, as uh, Jung would call it, the collective unconscious. We are all connected. And so when I have a pendulum, uh, I am connecting to that and asking it a question. And the lottery numbers aren't in the collective unconscious, which is why I can't find that. But there are other knowledges, other, you know, arcane knowledges that are there that I can access. So that's actually what happens when I do mediumship. So um, I can't tell you the uh, the locker code on the secret um, bank vault, uh, but I can talk about trends. I can talk about uh, themes. So because, um, yeah, that those the, that locker combination isn't in the uh, the collective unconscious. But, you know, other information I can absolutely find out. And so I think it's um, I don't hear voices. It's not something from beyond. This is me gathering knowledge that we all have access to. That's all magic is, is a metaphor. So if I um, have a jar and I put a photo in it and I put other stuff in it, let's say I'm doing a sweet jar. Um, I showed how to do one of those in a live stream. So um, I've got a sweet jar up here. Okay. So I actually haven't worked with the sweet jar yet. Um, so part of that is is actually sitting with this jar for um, you know, 20, 30 minutes a day. So this jar has a photo in it. The photo, one of them is of me. The other is of someone who I love, who I had a bit of a falling out with uh, um, about a year and a half ago and I miss dearly. And so this is to repair that relationship. And if I just put a bunch of crap in a jar and set it there and, and it meant nothing, then okay, well, it's just stuff in a jar. It doesn't do anything. Um, when you put the energy into it, because uh, this photograph is, um, is a memory that is, is really special to me um, and, you know, special to uh, the other person in there. 
and uh, there are other herbs in there that I know that this person likes. And so there's a connection and there was a lot of love that was put into this jar. And so if we're not going to talk about cursed stuff right now, because that's hard stuff, if we talk about love, um, you can just put stuff in a jar and it's just stuff in a jar. When magic works, it's, um, it's a metaphor for something else. So I'm trying to sweeten the relationship between myself and that other person who, um, being autistic, I don't know what I did, but I know that they're mad at me and they won't talk to me about what I did. So <laughs> it's hard for me. Like I, I acknowledge that I'm imperfect and I acknowledge that, um, you know, I have behavior that's problematic sometimes because I don't understand things. And so, yeah, I, I would love um, a conversation um, and maybe there'll be mediation in the future. But right now, that's not happening because it's matter moving matter. And when you're dealing in brain, right? So I'm not going to talk about everything to do with brain waves. This is very surface stuff. So day to day right now we're in beta. So I'm in mid beta right now. I'm not super stressed out. Um, some people might get more stressed out talking to the camera. When I make mistakes in the camera, I might be like, you know, going a little bit higher. When you're really stressed out, if you're in a traffic jam and you're super stressed, you're at high beta. And that is steel against steel, metal against metal, matter on matter, you are not going to change anything. So brainwaves that are a little bit more relaxed, you got low beta, which is just yeah, your day-to-day -day stuff. Then you've got alpha, and alpha's cool. You can solve any problem in alpha. Alpha is relaxed, alpha is creative. Um, alpha is kind of when you're in the flow. So if you are um, doing something you really enjoy and you don't realize how much time has passed, you're probably in alpha. Um, so that's a good state to do some magic, especially magic that is going to require um, you to be conscious and do something. So a great idea of um, alpha would be um, if you, um, and sometime, some, someday we'll do uh, sigils, which are basically like making a symbol that represents something. If you are artistic and you um, set out all your art supplies and you started drawing this sigil, and making it beautiful and embellishing it and you spent three hours on that and it felt like 15 minutes that's probably going to be an effective sigil because of that um that alpha state that you put into that typically when we're getting angry about a spell um and we're getting uh we really need it we really want it we're really desperate for it that's getting it into high beta and you're probably not going to make anything happen so when i did that sour jar it wasn't because i personally was hurt and angry and afraid and wanted to lash out because that's probably not going to be effective magic and when people are like oh you know it comes back to you times three or it's gonna you're gonna get negative energy back um not necessarily so i'm not a believer in the the rule of three that's a wiccan thing and i'm not wiccan it's okay if you are but that's not me so when you are doing magic um and you have that lust for results it's very difficult to make things move because you're not dealing with energy. Um, this is why it's important to um, work on yourself. And when we talk about magic, there's often the talk of the great work or um, um, of our lives, which is about our own personal healing. And in our culture, uh, my teacher Andrea Vitimus has said that we all have some we all have some sort of PTSD. We all have some sort of trauma. We all have lessons and things in our lives that are um, problematic and, and are uh, maladaptive. So a lot of the great work is personal work. And how do you do that personal work? There are a lot of ways to do it. The first and most important, which I talk about a lot on this channel, is meditation. I remember going to Andrea once and t having this problem, and he's like, well, what's your meditation game like? And I was like, none and she said gotta you gotta lift the weights caroline you gotta lift the weights and it's it's really it's mental weight training and so um i i did a live stream where i talked about meditation and merlin was that's kind of where to start is with the weightlifting is meditation um going back to brainwave so alpha is great if you're doing something that's kind of flow now if you are wanting to tinker with uh things on a deeper level getting into theta state. So theta is as deeply relaxed as you can get without falling asleep, <laughs> which is tough. If you fall asleep during meditation, okay, you got too relaxed. The best attitude to take towards magic is to play. 
and when the, when the um, when the stakes don't matter. That's the best way to start doing magic, and even still, I'll do it today as a game. Now, what kind of magic am I doing as a game? Um, the famous one that um, my, my teacher, Andrea Venomous, talks about in his book, uh, Hands on Chaos Magic, is about um, uh, seeing a cardinal. So cardinals are not super rare. They exist around here, and it could be that maybe I'm looking for cardinals so I notice more of them. Well, what's the difference between that? Like, if I'm looking for an opportunity, and I'm more likely to see the opportunity, what does that matter if I created the opportunity or if I just noticed the opportunity? I wanted the opportunity and it's there. What, where do I care? But uh, it does. I, I do think that there is something that goes on uh, to draw things. Like, I mean, if you're looking for yellow cars, you're more likely to see a yellow car. Um, but, you know, if you're looking to buy a yellow car, of course you want to see more of them. So what does it matter where that comes from? And that's kind of a lot of the, the chaos magic stuff is not really caring what the source is, of caring what the outcome is, um, or playing with the outcome. So um, maybe doing something like um, some uh, work on tomatoes going on sale. Um, if you you know want to make a, a, a bruschetta for dinner, or bris, 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 so to say bruschetta, I say bruschetta, tomato, tomato. So you want to grow some tomatoes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, hoping that tomatoes are on sale because you wanted to make something with tomatoes for dinner. That would be a perfect thing. It's great if tomatoes are on sale, but it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work. And that's this kind of stuff that you want to start out with, playing with magic, having fun. So it's really all about probability and play. And that's the attitude that you should be taking towards magic when you're learning and even, you know, in day to day life. So that when uh, push comes to shove, when your back is against the wall, that you can cast and you can protect yourself and you can um, do what you need to do. In, in a jam. Um, if you've got good magic chops and you're every day doing some little spell, some little thing to um, in tune yourself with your a your own self-discipline and b you know your own reality, then um, yeah like if then you're on a plane and there's engine trouble um, that you can maybe do some stuff on the spot and have that confidence and have that skill to be able to get out of there safe. Why do we do this stuff? And for some people, magic is all about self-development and personal development. Magic is all about learning how to heal and learning how to, um, you know, have this fulfilled life where they're feeling beautiful and happy. And that is just as valid as doing magic, you know, to find a hundred dollar bill. Um, I tend to be more results driven. So I, I tend to be more interested in um, cause and effect uh, with, you know, what I can see. Um, some people are, are not interested at all in results. Uh, some people are more interested in connecting with ancestors or connecting with, uh, with uh, nature or connecting with um, God or, or their gods, however they see that. And those are totally valid things. Um, so when you're kind of watching my channel, I'm going to be talking about results. And it's all about probability of realizing that there is a small chance that something could happen and how to select that reality. Mm -hmm. Practice every day, meditate every day, and start with things that are probable and don't matter. So those are good ways to start with some magic. And um, then when you need to do something, like um, you need to, uh, yeah, magic on the spot, you're in an airplane and there's engine trouble that you, you can do something because you you know that you can do it. And doubting your magic is also something, I mean, there's the, the Bible verse of uh, the faith of a mustard seed can move mountains. Um, but I mean, it takes that much doubt to wreck magic. So um, just, just have some fun, have some play um, and, uh, and see what you can do. Um, also, um, magic journal. Uh, I am actually going to be publishing a magic journal soon where you can like, if you do uh, a spell, you can write out, this is the date. These are the ingredients I used. And this is the, um, the method I used. Um, so if you have to read off of a piece of paper to do any sort of ritual or spell, it's too long. It should be something that you can memorize and you can do without looking it up because you want to stay in that um, altered state of consciousness. So having a journal and so if you sang a song, if you um, used, um, you know, a daisy that you picked uh, from, you know, your favorite park, if you, um, yeah, did something like that and then um, keep track of the results, keep track of how that worked and what didn't work, what did work. Okay, so there's a little bit 
of information on beginner magic and what to do if your magic doesn't work the first time. Um, I really hope that you got a lot out of this. If you did get something out of this, please do give me a thumbs up. Uh, I do um, custom magic spells. I'm having a sale in June that all services are 25% um, off during the month of June. So please do look at my website, www.carolineironwell.com. And uh, after booking that within two days, I will send you a custom spell and you can uh, start doing some magic for yourself. Uh, you can also book a private tarot reading, www.carolineironwell.com. Just click on book a reading. Um, and I hope to uh, connect with you soon. Uh, please do subscribe if you got value from this. Um, I hope that you have a wonderful day. Uh, and if no one has told you today, I love you and you matter to me. And I'm glad you're here. Take care, pumpkins. Bye-bye.